Hey friends, welcome to our class notes, episode number seven. We started off this training session with a very thorough warm up and strengthening exercise session for the legs, preparing the legs and hips for the upcoming dragon palm change that we are about to introduce over the next few weeks. After that, uh, which we will film in a later week, maybe next week, maybe the following week, we then moved further into the review of the snake smooth body palm, as you see here, and you have probably seen in the class notes episodes before. Again, moving through the whole palm change in a step-by-step -step pattern and in very slow motion. So this is the actual speed of the movement here. Um, really making sure that we hit every point, every um, single pit stop to make sure our alignment is on spot and the structure uh, is right. Then we went into the practice of the dragon palm change and uh, we have a few people in class that never practiced this palm change before. So we went step by step very slowly, making sure uh, the most important parts of each position are understood properly. So um, when facing this direction here, we first shift our weight forward, we have a kopu step and then step into the circle, piercing forward with the left hand here, pressing forward with the palm of the right hand, then we do another step forward with the right leg and then we turn to the left side to lift our right hand on the outside of our left arm and we rotate our body back facing the original direction from where we first entered the circle. From here comes the most remarkable move of the whole palm change, which is from a straight and fully extended position, we move down into a low squat position, resting on the thigh of our rear leg in a very balanced position, so we can find stability in this really low position here, having our front foot uh, placed on the floor with the full feet with a full foot and uh, the, the secondary foot or the, the rear leg only placed on the balls of the foot. Okay, let's uh, see that again from the start and counting moves here. So it starts with a weight shift, shifting forward. We add a kobu to step into the circle, number three, piercing hand on the left and pushing hand on the right pushing from the center of the palm and piercing forward with the fingertips. Now I step forward with the right foot and then I turn to my left side. I lift my right hand up on the outside of the left arm before I let my body rotate back into the original direction of my movement. From here I lower my left hand, fingers pointing down and my hand now drops to the outside of the right leg while I sit down and I try to keep my right arm extended and like with a gentle external rotation in the hand. Of course we practice this first section of the palm change on both sides. So here is the other side, stepping in, turning to the outside, lifting the arm and then dropping in this case the right hand on the outside of the left thigh and sitting down as comfortably as possible. Now this stance here is not comfortable in nature. You have to work to make it comfortable. So uh, I suggest when you practice, you do your repetitions here and you take a break from uh, your practice so that your muscle and muscles and joints can actually recover from uh, the training session. Okay, this is the most difficult move in the dragon palm change where you want to move from this low stance and change into the same stance just on the other side. Uh, one more time we go through the form until this point, stepping into the circle, piercing and pushing forward. Then we extend the body, we sit down and now I want to turn this position so I face the other direction. Therefore, I first lift my hips and I sit down again on the other side. I do this specifically because we practice here on a very uh, sticky floor uh, and bare feet. So um, I want to reduce the friction here for all my students 
and not practice so low as I just uh, did here in this example. Depending on the surface you practice on, let's say you practice on concrete uh, with shoes on, you can fully rotate in the low position, but I suggest if you practice on mats and bare feet that you first, when you do the move, the turn, that you lift your hips slightly so you have less pressure and less friction on your ankle joints, okay? So we went on to uh, finish the full palm change changing directions here, stepping back and moving into the snake position that you've learned before. From here you extend and then you step forward and back uh, to the circle. Okay, And since everybody's legs were quite fried after that, uh, our circle walking session afterwards was just a very gentle coordination practice. So we had our students walk through the single palm change, the snake smooth body palm and the dragon palm change without actually moving into the low positions. So you see here when I perform the snake, uh, I don't even bother going low. I just move through the patterns so I will uh, be able to recognize the directions and um, ingrain the pattern. So I don't need to think about it anymore. Very important step and very also important to understand you don't always have to practice hard on days where you're sore or when you're just tired. Just move through the, uh, through the patterns without going into the low positions and the next day you will be better. You can then um, yeah, add, add some intensity to your training, move through the low stances. But if you want to progress fast, this kind of training here, super relaxed and just basically avoiding all the strain uh, is also very helpful. And you can even do that uh, in five minutes uh, when you're just preparing your tea water or like preparing your coffee in the morning, you just walk through the circle like, like so for two or three minutes, just reviewing the patterns. And uh, there you go, another learning session done. Okay, so this is super relaxed circle walking practice here. We did that for um, roughly 15 minutes, uh, especially since, like I said, we had some people in class who never practiced the dragon palm change. So for them, it's important practice to better understand the directions, which way do I need to turn, which foot is in front and so on and so on. We finished the circle walking session with a short standing meditation, basically doing the classic uh, uh posture, standing like a tree. Um, and reviewing the basic alignment. Um, and here we always start with uh, aligning the knees and the toes. We bend the knees slightly. We want to tilt our hips forward or backward, depending on where your personal tension lies, in order to release tension both on the front of your body, in the hip flexor area, as well as the area of the lower back. Uh, lengthen the spine, tuck the chin, then we lift the arms. We try to lift the arms without lifting our shoulders. And uh, yeah, you can see that I put the camera in a very bad angle, so you actually don't see what I'm talking about. But I talked about the structure of my arm and how my hand uh, gently externally rotates, so thumb out, and uh, I, I work with the intent that my upper arm, my biceps, rotates inward. And this creates a nice and strong structure in combination with a very open back. So your shoulder blades move away from each other. So you have a round back and the externally rotated arm with your arm, uh, the angle of your arm um, opened more than 90 degrees. So it's if someone pushes into that arm, it's a very strong sh structure that won't uh, break. Okay. And the next important thing we talked about, since we've talked about the qualities of lengthening the spine, as well as relaxing and sinking into the floor, this week and the upcoming weeks, we will talk and practice a lot with the quality of expansion. But we will talk about that in a later video session. So we then, after practicing the Zhan Zhuang, uh, we went into a Roshou practice to review this Zhan Zhuang posture in Roshou practice, because there's basically in the basic pattern, there's two 
positions of your hands. The first position is you are on the outside and you can press into your partner. Or, and the other direction is that your partner is pressing into your structure from the outside, like here. And your hand is basically in the same position as it is in the standing meditation that we did before. Now, one of the next topics in the upcoming weeks will be the clinching position or the clinch. And uh, so today we first learned how to move from Rosho, from a more or less uh, coordinative practice, of course, into the actual clinch position. So once your hand is on the outside, you move with your right hand in this case, and you try to grab the shoulder blade with an underhook. And on the other side, you have an overhook and you grab your partner's arm just above the elbow joint at the triceps. So underhook on one side, grabbing the triceps slightly above the elbow on the other side, pinching your elbow in. So that's a tight control. In a clinch position, you want to make sure that your upper body is aligned straight towards your opponent. There is no rotation in your upper body. You need to put your whole chest to the chest of your partner. No turning here. Just straightly, directly aligned towards the incoming pressure from your partner. Try to never leave a gap between your chest and your partner's chest. This just creates opportunities to uh, throw you or even worse, to strike. So stay really close. And from this position, you basically have two choices. You either want to get out of the clinch without getting hit or, or, or kicked. This we will talk about later. And the other option from the uh, clinching position, of course, is to attack directly. A couple of versions here, but since we've practiced the snake smooth body palm, we practiced a variation of the knee tap takedown that we've learned with Tim Cartmel a while ago. When someone is pulling or holding your arm like, like so, it is very hard to pull out your hand. But there is one trick that always helps. With a slight internal rotation of your thumb, you can easily turn your or pull your hand out of the grip post your hand on the outside of your partner's leg and then basically review or repeat the snake throw that we've practiced uh, in the previous weeks. If you didn't see those videos, please go back and watch those videos. I step back, I step to the side and then I uh, shift my weight, use my shoulder and let her fall. One more time, external, uh, internal rotation of your thumb, knee tap take down here, from the clinch position. So we practiced this a couple of times. And uh, yeah, this was basically the content of uh, last night's class. Uh, yeah, and I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if there's any questions. This weekend, I'll be teaching a workshop in Berlin. Maybe that's an opportunity for you to join. Otherwise, we will see each other again next week with the next episode of the class notes. Have a nice week, everyone.